Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webcast today, Advanced Surfacing with Laws and CONTIA V5. Our presenter is RAN3D Senior Technical Training Engineer, Ray Olson. Ray has extensive experience consulting and training in CATIA, and he is a certified CATIA V5 part design expert as part of the Dassault System Certified Professional Program. So we're very happy to have you with us today, Ray. I will now pass things over to you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, looking today at the Genitive Shape Design Workbench of CATIA V5, it's going to be, and one of the capabilities there, as we mentioned already, uh, using the law command. So just a quick uh, overview, a little bit of my background. Um, as we've already mentioned, uh, I've been a longtime user of uh, CATIA since uh, 1986 on the software, starting out with version 2 of CATIA. I've seen it go through many changes uh, over the years, um, and working with CATIA V5 since uh, 1999. Uh, prior to joining uh, RAN 3D, I was involved in using the software uh, in the creation of airfoils for uh, jet engine components. And uh, since that time, I've been involved in installing and customizing and training in the use of uh, the software now with uh, RAN 3D, um, a division of RAN Worldwide for the last uh, 15 years. Okay. So we kind of outlined uh, our focus for today is to take a look at the actual law command itself. And one of the things that uh, we wanted to start out with first is how do I know from a CATIA perspective if you have that capability? Well, of course, once uh, you make your way to the Genitive Shape Design Workbench, I would recommend that you find the top of your CATIA window, go to Insert, work your way down, and look in the menu to verify that you do have the law command appearing right under wireframe. If you do not see the law there, uh, that means that you probably are using a reduced capability of the Genitive Shape Design Workbench that's uh, typically marketed uh, as a GS1, which is very common with configurations that focus more on solid modeling only. An example of that configuration would be um, the mechanical design number two, which only contains GS1, uh, where the hybrid design number two, or sometimes called HD2, uh, contains the full GSD workbench. So once you've verified that uh, you do have the workbench um, available to you, or I should say command, we can move from there. So the idea with the law is that it allows us to vary values that we place into the actual um, menu systems for the creation of our geometry. So many of you have probably already experienced the law. You've been using what's referred to as a constant law so that if you just simply offset a curve uh, parallel to another curve and you just keyed in a distance of 10 millimeters, you've actually been using the law just that you've been using a constant value of 10 millimeters only. So we want to show where the law is available and some different applications for applying it. Uh, the law types that we can uh, take a look at, of course, as I mentioned already, the constant, uh, the linear, where you provide a starting and ending value, which are some of the easier ones to use, along with the S-type law, where the transition from one numerical value to another occurs over a distance. And then we'll be taking a look at the advanced law primarily, where you do have to, prior to using the advanced, you will need to create necessary input geometry. So let's talk a little bit more about the advanced area, since it is the one that does take a little more construction, where the others are simply just putting numbers into fields. So here um, we're going to define two items, one referred to as a reference, you know, the only one other input is going to be a definition. The reference can be something very, very simple. Um, many times it can just be a perfectly straight line, and I would say large over 99% of the time it's pretty much always a straight line, or even can just be the axis system. Definition usually takes a little bit more work. Uh, to define, and most of the time it is actually a sketch. So here, during the creation of uh, an advanced law, uh, we've clicked on the actual law icon. So that puts us in the mode where we can actually create the law so that it will wind up as an item in the specification tree. And 
for the reference, which I said most of the time is just the line, we're just simply right-clicking in the field. And from that reference field, being able to just simply select something like the y-axis. In the case of the definition, though, most of the time it is a sketch just because it's easier to work with a sketch on a flat plane and generally in that definition. So there are tools to allow you to examine the law after you have um, provided both the reference and the definition uh, geometry. So you can measure these distances. And the key with the law is that it's going to use these numerical distances from the reference to the definition curve to control the feature or the piece of geometry that this is going to create. So laws can be used to control angles, lengths and radiuses, and also a conic parameter, which is very similar to a portion of an ellipse. And conic is probably the lesser use of the group, but it uh, will usually consist of controlling a parm from 0 0.01 to 0.99, depending on how flat or sharp uh, you wish the shape to be. Some of the areas where we can use the law uh, is in the parallel curve command. Uh, this allows us to not just simply offset a piece of geometry on a support surface, uh, a fixed distance, but by taking advantage of the icon in the menu there where it says law, we can actually then activate the law and then be able to take advantage of the linear and the S-type or the advance if you happen to have uh, built the earlier geometry. So this is, provides a way that we can gradually taper um, our resulting geometry, in this case a parallel curve over a particular distance. And we'll have some examples coming up where we're going to show that. Another uh, area where the law can be applied uh, is in the helix command. Uh, it can be used to control the pitch or the distance between each revolution of uh, the helix. And so we have access to both the linear and the S-type along with the advanced law with this command here. So here we're varying the pitch distance in the creation of the helix. So we want to take a look at applying some of these in some various different situations. So here's a little preview of some things that we're going to uh, look at. And I also wanted to show some ways to apply the law uh, in some different situations. So with that, I'm going to be switching uh, to a session of CATIA now. And here I have just a simple 3D curve um, existing. And I want to use one of the laws from the Genitive Shape Design Workbench. So I am in Genitive Shape. And of all the um, toolbars in Genitive Shape, um, there's a quick overview. There's three toolbars that pretty much do everything in Genitive Shape. It's going to be wireframe. And we see the law that we're going to be focusing on, uh, surface, and then operations. So it's pretty much the entire workbench. And what my goal here is, is I'm going to use the uh, surface toolbar and take advantage of the sweep. The sweep is one of the uh, surface creation uh, items uh, that takes um, advantage of the law command, and that's kind of what we want to show here. So let's go ahead and activate the sweep. Uh, the sweep here, I'm going to use a line sweep to simulate, um, if though I was putting a helix around the outside of this 3D curve. One of the limitations to a helix is that the center line you use for a helix must always be a perfectly straight line. There's no exception to that. In this particular example here, my, this is my center line for my somewhat helix, is anything but a line. So I'm going to accomplish uh, creating this by using the line sweep of the different subtypes, I'm going to use a reference surface. And the reference surface is going to be used to orientate the line um, because these are predefined shapes uh, in the case of the swept. So we use the uh, with ref surf to orientate a line in 3D space. The guide curve, of course, will be my center curve here. Uh, the reference surface, now it doesn't have to be a surface, basically it just has to be something that the system can intersect 
um, a plane with. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a surface. A plane is perfectly fine. In fact, in this example, I'm just going to use the XY plane. And for the um, distance, we'll go with 10 um, millimeters. And I'm also going to use a, um, a limit uh, during the uh, construction of this. So we'll go ahead and use that. And if I just go with the law here, as far as what's very common uh, when people think of angles, because what I'm controlling now with this is an angle, is I think zero to 360 degrees uh, is very common uh, item to use. So as I provide this value here for my law, and then do my little preview here, the um, system is taking a line because and taking this line and as it moves it along this 3D curve, it's changing the angle here of zero and then eventually when it gets to the other end of the curve, it'll be at 360. Well, angles don't necessarily have to go from zero to 360. So by activating the law, I'm going to change that to 9,000 degrees and then apply that so that now as it it will rotate around that 3D curve a multiple numbers of times essentially by increasing the uh, value for the uh, angle in which I want it to finish at. So I wanted to show how this would be a construction geometry that we would use um, for another little feature here. So I'm going to answer uh, OK to this. And one of the things I'm going to need is a curve on the edge of the surface that we just created here. So I'm going to take advantage of the boundary command and be able to select, uh, in this case, um, no propagation because I just want it right on the edge of this. That's it. And that's creating my curve all the way around there. Now the idea is that I can use this curve for um, to sketch on the end of it. I'm just going to quickly uh, create a plane normal to the curve out at this end point right here. There we go. And then I'm going to sketch on that and take advantage of uh, a position sketch so that I can use this plane here and my center point. I'm going to do a projection point of this item right here. And then for controlling the vertical and horizontal, I'm going to um, use a uh, normal to a surface. And in this case, I want my vertical to be normal to, now a surface can be a plane, just as long as the system can intersect it. That's the only thing that really matters. And then from here, I'll activate my sketch. So now I'm at the end of this feature. So I'm just going to drop in a centered rectangle here really quick that I can do under 0, 0. There we go. Place that there. And just add a couple constraints. And we'll be ready to go. it out and now I have my sketch at the end of this curve so I could either stay in the generative shape design workbench or if I wanted to use the uh, command from part design I could just switch back over to part design make my way to the rib command and of course to build a solid it needs to have the underline underneath the part body so the system is going to move that up there for me thank you and of course the sketch I'm going to use is the one I just got done creating. The center curve will be this curve here. And if I do a quick preview, it will then sweep that around there. But as it does, it, it is twisting in this area here. The, uh, the rectangle is not staying uh, perpendicular to this surface. 
So in the command here, I'm going to go with a profile control type of ref surface and then identify this surface as the reference. So the system will intersect a surface as it sweeps it around. And now as I do my um, preview here, I'm finding that my rectangle is now wrapping all the way around uh, that shape and staying with the uh, bottom of the rectangle orientated where I need it. So the law can be a um, provide the additional construction geometry that we need at, at different times. So I want to show um, another example here. This is be using the advanced law. Uh, here uh, I want to actually um, create a, not really a piece of pipe, but maybe a, a protective covering or tube of some type. And I need it to be various different diameters along here. So I have already created the um, reference definition, which is just a straight line. And so I'm going to activate this sketch where I've put in um, this shape. There we go. And what I want to do is have multiple copies of this shape. So to accomplish that, I'll just use standard commands as far as right-clicking and going down to object and finding the advanced search. So that way it would grab all those at once. And then in the operations toolbar of the sketcher, I'll just simply do a transformation and duplicate this about 19 times, starting here and duplicating it to this area here. And then with that, I have all my different shapes. The key with using this type of a shape is that you cannot have any vertical lines that are part of the actual profile. Uh, that's, that's not allowed. Um, all you have to do is provide some type of an angle, but you cannot have any part of your uh, profile have the letter V on it for vertical, even if it's a small amount of a an angle that would be fine, but the system has to be able to measure over a distance and with a vertical line it has problems with. So it's not possible to do that. Okay, so I've completed my sketch. And now with that, I would be able to use both of these to complete um, my surface sweep. So I am gonna, right now I'm in the part design workbench, so we're gonna make a click here to get us back to genitive shape design. And typically with sweep, one of the most common uh, used one is a circle sweep. Now circle sweep is a very quick and easy way to uh, put in a radius and simply create something that almost looks like a pipe. Okay. But we're not limited to that. Um, by taking advantage of the advance or the law command, so from insert here, I'll come down to law and click on law. And to define the law, I would select uh, my reference curve is this item here. And then for my actual uh, defini definition, I would select the sketch I just made. And the system then would measure the uh, distances across that. So I want to go ahead and use that for my sweep. So let's go ahead now and activate that sweep one more time. And, but for the radius, we're going to activate the law and take advantage of the law that I have existing here. Here we go. And what the system is showing here in the menu is where it's varying the radius over that distance rather than the constant law would just put in 10 millimeters and that'd be it. So here we're using the advance area do that, then do a preview and then we'd have that as our resulting surface is what we could end up with here. So the system is then measuring that distance. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a lot of different items as far as the complexity of the sketches. You saw most of that sketch I just did with um, copy and actually translation. In this example here, we wanted to create a um, piece of pipe that had a particular uh, diameter at one end, and then at the other end um, have these radiuses involved and have it be the size 
hear it. So to create that, um, we built a law using a simple line and that simple sketch. Now in this particular case, it was important that the length of our 3D curve and the length of the uh, reference line were the same because we were trying to control more precise distances from the end here. So in that case, we just did a measure of the 3D curve and stored that measurement here in the tree. And then that way, when I created the reference line, the length of that line in the sketch equals this measure. And that way we can keep that in sync. So very similar to what we just saw a moment ago, uh, the idea here that I can use the um, circle sweep. And again, just being my center curve, and then using the law and clicking on the advanced law that I had created earlier, I can then select that from the tree, and then that's going to control my sizes. Say OK here, and do a little preview, and we end up with that as a result. Now, let's say I wanted these switched around, that I wanted the smaller end at the opposite end of what it is right now. I could activate the law command here. Let's click on invert and then do a preview on that. So now by inverting the law, I now have the, um, the expanded end down at this end here. So now that I would have that surface in place, again, I can make my way back to part design uh, real quick and just take advantage of the um, thick thin option. There we go. And select our surface and then answer OK to offset that so that we'd end up with um, a resulting uh, surface. And I can hide that. There we go. So that's something that's very challenging to do in part design only to be able to create. Uh, the flange at the end with the radiuses and then have it compressed down at this end here. So just a quick couple finished example here, are the, the same principle here. This is the idea that we're just using for the sketch, um, a simple series of primarily circles more than in very, very short lines to, to represent uh, that. Another uh, Quick example with the um, taking advantage of the uh, advanced law is creating something such as a cam. So to create this um, cam uh, shape here, uh, we'll actually build the law first. Now I'm currently in the part design workbench, so I'll make a switch here to genitive shape and use the law command because before I use the advanced law, I have to actually build it first. So the reference, I'm just going to use the uh, Y axis. So I'm just going to right click in here, use the uh, Y axis. And then for the definition, I already have this sketch existing. So I'm gonna go with that. And then to, um, so that's, this is now going to be used to control the size of my line sweep. So I'm actually gonna, drop here, uh, switch from circle sweep to line, and from uh, this command here, we're gonna use uh, where the reference surface, our guide curve is going to be here. And this is kind of already lying on the Y, Z plane, so that's gonna be our surface. And typically for this, um, our length, um, for this might be just 25 in one direction and 13 in the other. So we'll do a preview on that, something like there. But actually the, the 25, which is out here, we want to control with the, um, the law. So we're going to activate the law command, click on advance. And then the law that we built earlier, we'll select that and apply that. We have our resulting shape, and our goal is that from the center of the circle is the distance that we want to keep a cam or moving a lever up or down as this rotates. 
So we're using the law as a way to control that distance. And now that I have that in place, I'm going to jump into the uh, part design world and just quickly use my um, command here to take this surface and just add some thickness to it. I'll go about 20 millimeters. Think of us that as the result. And looks good. And then I would just hide this. So now I have a way of um, being able to change my shading here. There we go. To create something that will pivot around this hole. And as it rotates around this hole, the distance here could move a various different lever or other item up or down particular distances, and then by using the law, we can uh, accomplish that. So we also wanted to show the um, using the parallel option in two situations for that. So here we have kind of an impeller, and what our goal here in creating this is that usually for this, all you really need is the first um, blade, and then after that, you can just simply pattern it around for the other ones. So in the um, construction of this, there were two main curves involved, and it's that if I just do a quick hide show here, that we have a curve that represents the center of the um, blade at the top and the center of the blade at the bottom is kind of what we're seeing here. Okay, so let's bring this back out of hide. And so what we wanted to show is how we use the parallel command, but we can also introduce in the uh, offset command to control that. So as I modify this existing item here, what was typically done to construct this is uh, now we have the center of the blade. We just simply create uh, each side by taking the center geometry and just doing a parallel curve offset. And the most common is just to put in one millimeter in this case, so it was one millimeter at each end. But again, by just clicking on the law command, uh, we may need one millimeter at one end, um, but by going here to linear, I can decide that I want to have two millimeters at the other end. So we go with that, and then do our preview. So that then adjusts our curve so that it is now thicker at this end of two millimeters, and then over that distance now down at this end, it's one millimeter. So by using the, uh, the parallel command and taking advantage of the law command to accomplish that. In our uh, next example here, I wanted to show actually some of the, the similar uh, technique. Uh, the idea that I'm going to create a um, swept surface around this. And one of the things I need to do is offset this simple curve. Well, as we um, accomplish that using the um, parallel curve, then I could just select this curve and using the, the plane that it happens to lie on as the default. And doing a little preview here, actually we need to reverse the direction. We could then create this curve offset from there, but then taking advantage of the law that we could take advantage of the um, linear law and just provide something like 54 and do a preview on that so that it would gradually get larger as it works its way around. Now, actually, I need it in the other order, so I'd click on the law as far as I want the 16 at the other end millimeters. So I'm going to take advantage of this inverse item and invert that, and then hit my update to bring that back into shape that way. So that's one of the items that we wanted to show here for that. Um, and in the um, creation of 
this particular item. Let's bring this out of hide, how this was applied is using the adaptive sweep, where the adaptive sweep we can create a sketch and be able to change the parameters uh, of the sketch uh, during the sweeping process. So we start out here, and then as the curve gradually works its way away from here and gets a little bit larger until we get down here to the shape, we're a little bit there. A little bit further out, they were taking advantage of the um, the law to control just simple wireframe geometry um, in the uh, construction of the of the part, and that is the key to many of the uh, construction of a lot of these items is getting the necessary wireframe um, in place to uh, get that accomplished. And as a quick uh, wrap up. Uh, to my uh, presentation here, uh, just influencing how important the wireframe happens to be uh, to develop, let's say, the 3D curve. Um, I did want to show just a quick technique of creating a 3D curve from the idea that I need to come up with a 3D curve to go through this box from one fitting to the other. So it works out very well in using the sketcher to just create a sketch representing your path in one direction, and then creating a second sketch looking in this direction, which in this case happens to be straight down to here. So we have that in place. So taking advantage of two sketches, we can use a wireframe command. If I go here, insert wireframe. And my own little personal side note, I like to express that the wireframe toolbar in Genitive Shape Design is my most favorite toolbar in the CATIA software, when I use the most. Let's go here to combine is the command we're going to look at. And what we're going to do here is combine this sketch with the second sketch to create our 3D curve is what it will end up doing. This works out to be an easier way to build a 3D curve rather than putting a bunch of points in space, which can be challenging just trying to figure out where to put the points um, and get them into position. And really what's happening with the um, combined command in the background is the to kind of demonstrate what's happening that you don't actually see. Um, after cre create, selecting the particular sketch, uh, Let's go here and make this quite large. The system will take the first sketch and extrude that essentially to infinity, but that's close enough for what we need to do here for one direction. And then it will go ahead and use the um, other sketch for creating a surface in the second direction. And then what the combine command is doing in the background is that it's intersecting the two surfaces uh, to create the 3D curve. That's really what's uh, happening. The advantage in doing it this way is that it makes it a little bit easier to control so that if you needed to modify this radius right here, this bend in this area, you're, it's bending bent a little bit too much. So by double clicking on the sketch, we can then double click on the numerical value here in the sketch of the 81 millimeters. Maybe change that to 83 or so. And because of the parent-child relationship, when I exit out, the uh, system will automatically update the combined curve as a result from that. So it gives me a, it could be much easier to adjust the 3D curve um, through this method rather than uh, any of the other items. Great. So our item there, and I'm going to return here to my presentation. And I want to thank you very much for attending um, and seeing some different uses of the law command from the Genitive Shape Design Workbench of CATIA V5.